Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News. Uh, this is the show where we're remembering the life and times of Jay Jay Lalitha. She passed away last night. We're getting you details of all of what took place through the night and also what to expect in the day ahead across Tamil Nadu. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jayalalitha passes away following a massive cardiac arrest. Last rites to be, to be performed in the evening today. The body has been kept at Rajaji Hall for people to pay their last respects. O Panir Selvam is sworn in as the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Seven-day state mourning has been announced. December 6th declared as a public holiday by the state government. Leaders cutting across political divide pay glowing tributes to the late Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, President, Vice President, Prime Minister Sonia Gandhi and Karunanidhi term her losses irreparable. In other news, 61 Rajya Sabha MPs moved petition seeking impeachment proceedings against a judge of the Andhra Pradesh Telangana High Court alleging atrocities against a Dalit judicial officer. And Russia and China veto a draft resolution at the UN Security Council calling for a seven-day ceasefire in Syria's embattled city of Aleppo. Resolution was to allow unimpeded access of aid. Jay Jalalitha is no more. That's a top story that we are tracking. She passed away at the Apollo Hospital in Chennai at 11.30 p.m. on Monday night after suffering a massive cardiac arrest. Her last rites will be held this evening. Her mortal remains have been kept at Rajaji Hall in Chennai for people to pay their last respects. And already we are seeing hundreds of people gathering outside. The Prime Minister will leave for Chennai in a short while from now to pay homage to the departed leader, along, of course, with uh, Congress President, uh, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi as well, slated to fly off to Chennai in a short while. O Panir Selvam has now been sworn in as the Chief Minister of the state. Inconsolable AI ADMK supporters outside Apollo Hospital in Chennai reacting to the news of the passing away of J. Jayalalitha. The 68 year old leader suffered a massive cardiac arrest on Sunday evening and passed away at 11 30 pm on Monday night. Apollo Hospital released a statement announcing her death after a 75 day battle against illness. She was hospitalized on September 22, following complaints of fever and dehydration, but she never fully recovered. Jayalalitha's body was taken to her Pose Garden residence before being taken to Rajaji Hall. Her body has been kept there for people to pay their last respects. Her last riots are slated to be performed at 4.30 p.m. today. At the Raj Bhavan, a Somba ceremony was held where Jayalalitha loyalist O Panir Selvam was sworn in as the new chief minister along with all ministers of the erstwhile cabinet. Governor Vidyasagar Rao paid rich tributes to Jayalalitha. Affectionately Kal as Amma. She was an embodiment of women's empowerment and filled with indefatigable spirit. She was known for her noble qualities and sacrificed her life for the cause of the poor and downtrodden. The Tamil Nadu government has declared 6th December 2016 as a public holiday under the Negotiable Instrument Act as a mark of respect to Jayalalitha. The state government has also announced a seven-day state mourning from today. During the period, the national flag on all government buildings will be flown at half-mast. No official entertainment will also be held during this period. The government has also declared a three-day holiday for all educational institutions in the state. 
the neighboring union territory of puducherry has also announced a holiday for all government offices and educational institutions today as a mark of respect to jayalalitha bureau report rajya sabha tv in fact a neighboring state of kerala also announcing a one day in mourning period uh, in as a mark of respect to jayalalitha and as people mourn the loss of their beloved amma political leaders as well paid glowing tributes to one of the country's most popular leaders calling her the iron lady of indian politics president pranam mukherjee vice president mohammad hamid ansari prime minister narendra modi and leaders cutting across political parties paid rich tributes to tamil nadu chief minister jayalalitha who passed away on monday night President Pranam Mukherjee expressed grief at the passing away of the stalwart of Tamil Nadu politics. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari condoled her death, saying Jayalalitha's demise is an irreparable loss to the people of India. The Vice President hailed her contributions in the development of Tamil Nadu and its people. In a series of tweets, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that her connect with citizens and her concern for the welfare of poor and marginalized will be a source of inspiration. In a statement Congress President Sonia Gandhi hailed her as a towering figure in national and political life who lived her life with same indomitable courage with which she battled her last illness. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi expressed grief over Jaya's death and tweeted that the people have lost a great leader. He has become a household name in the state of Tamil Nadu because of her pro people and pro poor initiatives she is a great orator and also a great administrator she will go down in the history as a real revolutionary leader here people call her fondly as a porachi talaivi but even otherwise also i personally consider that she has really brought a revolution in the politics coming from an ordinary background jalalitha is no more with us she was representative of a very powerful and a very strong politics the way she had served the people of tamil nadu the way she had worked for the people of tamil nadu will always be remembered for years to come entire nation is shocked and deeply saddened by the sad demise of uh, tamil nadu cm uh, miss j jalalitha she was a person of indomitable spirit fearless courage and an innate determination to do what she had decided to do she faced many political and personal challenges but rose up to the occasion to win each one of them she had a tremendous ability to um, understand the pulse of her people and she served the people of tamil nadu in the way that only she could film abhinay se nikal kar aaya hua koi vyakti wahan ki garib janta ko itne lambe samay tak prabhavit kar sakta hai achambit kar sakta hai uska netrut kar sakta hai uski jeekti jaagti misal jayalalita ji hain i had uh, personal contact uh, with her as her lawyer and uh, i found her to be most erudite extremely sophisticated and an excellent communicator Jayalalitha's arch rival and DMK supremo M Karunanidhi offered his heartfelt condolences at her loss he said the wishes of lakhs of her followers will make her immortal DMK leader MK Stalin also mourned Jaya's death calling her an iconic and courageous leader in a series of tweets he termed her death as an irreparable loss paying tributes to Jayalalitha Home Minister Rajnath Singh appealed to the people of Tamil Nadu to remain calm Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar termed her demise as sad and declared a one day mourning in the state West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee also tweeted terming the death of Jayalalitha as a big loss Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhara Rajay also expressed grief over the demise of Jayalalitha and even this morning the tweets continue to pour in the reactions continue to pour in from various political leaders and of course personalities as well across the country and really, that really goes on to see the kind of legacy that she leaves uh, we are joining on we are being joined in fact by senior journalist uh, s srinivasan on the phone line from chennai 
Uh, Srini, sir, what according to you would really be that lasting impression of Jayalalitha, the legacy that she leaves behind? Well, as uh, you know, uh, last night uh, after 11.30, um, you know, it was announced that she has passed away. People have begun to pay their homages this morning. And uh, as all the leaders pointed out, the legacy of Jalita will continue for a long time. She has emerged as a leader, uh, you know, even taller than her mentor, MGR who died in 1987. Um, what the, one of the outstanding things of Jelta is her, uh, you know, besides other abilities of administration, uh, social welfareism, uh, her ability to fight for the rights of Tamil people. She emerged as a champion of the cause of uh, uh, Tamil population, uh, not in a parochial sense, but in a positive sense, whatever issues came across, whether it has to do with the uh, Mullapuriya Dam issue or Kaveri issue, because the state had several uh, river water disputes, whether it is GST, whether it is power, whether it is investment, hmm. she fought very professionally for the rights of the state. She maintained friendly relations with the uh, national leaders. She had personal equations with some of them. Uh, including the uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But when it came to professional issues, she maintained a very strict uh, line. And whatever she did was uh, for the state of Tamil Nadu. This is one of her outstanding qualities, which uh, people really appreciated. Absolutely, and yes. Uh, in fact, we also joined on the phone line by uh, Suresh Kumar, also a journalist based in Chennai. Uh, Suresh, uh, you know, has the news sunk in because even for people here, even for uh, for me for that matter, uh, it's still difficult to believe that she's passed away. And I can just imagine how her followers and supporters are feeling at the moment. Uh, just showing you those visuals, of course, of all those people who have gathered there, Rajaji Hall, and that's going to continue, of course, through the day until, of course, uh, you know, the last rites take place at 4:30. But Suresh. What is it uh, that uh, you know you felt, and how how do, are people around you reacting to this news? Uh, <clears throat> the ADMK Supremo and former Chief Minister Jayalalitha, after a 75 days struggle, um, uh, was declared dead at about 11:30 due to a massive cardiac arrest, which happened on Sunday. Right, the news came in. Uh, party workers and public from the hospital as well as police garden, where the body was brought for final rites. And now the body has been taken and it is in uh, Rajaji Hall, where thousands of uh, party cadres, public, government officials, police officials are uh, paying homage to the departed leader. Um, Union Minister Vengay Naidu is in, the, is in Rajaji Hall, and also, Union Minister Pund Radhakrishnan paid homage to Lilita. Cutting across party line, several leaders are paying homage to the leader. And thousands of party cadres are waiting to have a glimpse of their leader. All the schools and colleges are shut for three days. And all shops, business establishments, will not work for a day. All right. And, uh, you know, talking about the leaders who will be, of course, visiting, uh, we also like to tell our viewers that the Prime Minister, uh, the Prime Minister uh, uh, Narendra Modi will be flying uh, to Chennai at about 9.30 this morning is what we are learning uh, to pay his last respects uh, to J.J. Lilitha. Also, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi is slated to leave for Chennai in a short while uh, also to pay his last respects there at Rajaji Hall and eventually uh, when the last rites take place at 4.30 uh, this evening. Um, and as you can see on the visuals there, these are live visuals that are coming in, and some of them, of course, are from outside, um, where uh, people, of course, have gathered to pay their last respects. Uh, still the news, you know, slowly sinking in, really, among, his, among her supporters and followers. Uh, we did see last night, once the news broke, how people reacted outside the Apollo Hospital. Um, on the phone line, still with us, um, uh, st still with us on the phone line, we have Suresh, uh, um, Suresh, uh, you know, one concern, if at all, if you can say, uh, hopefully that wouldn't take place, uh, but that would be a concern for the, uh, uh, for the police authorities at this point.
to make sure that everything goes on smoothly, uh, no kind of violence takes place? How are they prepared to, uh, you know, control any kind of this untoward incident? Uh, the Tamil Nadu police are fully prepared. And the security has been beefed up in Rajaji Hall. Uh, and uh, there are no chances of any untoward incident taking place. Uh, so so say us uh, that uh, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandrababu Naidu, uh, Karnataka CM Sidharamaya, uh, Kerala CM uh, Vijayan, Puducherry CM Narayan Sami will be visiting the Rajaji Hall and paying their home, homage to the departed leader. The security is uh, intact and uh, there are no chances of any untoward incidents taking place at any part of Tamil Nadu. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we're also joined on the phone line uh, with uh, Parsa Ju Venkatesha Rao Jr., senior journalist, of course, joining us on the phone line from the capital. Uh, Parsa, sir, I remember talking to you really before the elections that took place, so whether she can turn the tide and get a second term and uh, look how she did it, uh, you know, that in a spectacular manner. And that was really uh, that she's leaving behind. She broke barriers and how? Yeah, she was um, a very unorthodox politician. And uh, despite her unorthodoxy, she uh, succeeded. And I think that's what uh, makes her uh, unique. Uh, she took risks, uh, I think, basically because uh, she didn't uh, believe in um, uh, tactical alliances or opportunistic things. She, I mean, she was, uh, uh, if critics can call her, very stubborn and obdurate. But she seemed to know her mind, and she felt that she should play the game on her own terms. And uh, that's what she did uh, throughout her life, uh, whether it was a career in the movies or in politics. And she paid a price for it. She was not always successful. She had a lot of uh, opposition. Uh, but there was some sort of uh, uh, inner uh, resolve and determination um, that made her uh, sort of uh, face up to these uh, critics with a very calm face. Uh, she didn't blame anyone. She didn't ever moan the fact that she was a woman and that she was being victimized. She took it on a stride, and I think that speaks volume uh, for her uh, personality. Absolutely, and the very fact that you know, no one until now who has actually uh, you know sent their condolences have has even called her woman politician. That she was the greatest woman politician. She was the best, one of the best politicians that India has produced. I think that in itself speaks a lot about the kind of uh, you know, power that she wielded, about the kind of influence that she had on people. She really broke the barrier on that front, at least, especially in a conservative society uh, like we have seen in Tamil Nadu. We're also joined by Narayan Lakshman, senior deputy editor of The Hindu, joining us on the phone line. Uh, Lakshman, um, uh, you know, we are talking about the kind of legacy that Jayalalitha leaves behind. Uh, there are two kinds of reactions, of course, that we always get. One is of her being autocratic and ruthless, and the other one really of, uh, like she's called Amma. And you know, uh, which one of it do you think eventually is what people will remember? Um, I, I really <coughs> think they will remember both because it, uh, the, question, the answer to your question depends on who you ask. So obviously among the mass of uh, followers, AI, ADMK loyalists, people who have been with her since uh, she burst onto the scene in 1984 and then 1989 onwards as CM, uh, they will all remember her as this demi or semi-god like figure, uh, a woman who literally not just broke through the glass ceiling but smashed it to smithereens and then completely took the reins of power and was also the best benevolent uh, head of government who could deliver to them with these you know, welfare goods from mix mixers and grinders to mass weddings to of course midday meal scheme and so many other things. But yet there is also the sec another section of people and institutions, including, for example, the media, who will remember her as a sort of a soft authoritarian even, you know, who went after them with the privilege motions, including us at the Hindu, uh, who dismissed many thousands of public sector employees for daring to go on a strike. Um, who took the law into her own hands in what some would call an undemocratic fashion. Um, although in her case, again, you know, if you ask her or her, her followers, they would obviously see it as, you know, in, the, in a broader context and justify certain uh, means 
uh, and end um, in terms of the kind of leader she was overall. So I think All both right. legacies will endure in, in, in a nutshell. All right, Lakshman, thanks so much for joining us and giving us that reaction through the day. We'll come back to all our guests uh, who've been kind enough to speak to us, give us their reactions really on this uh, news, which is, of course, uh, shocking to a lot of our supporters and followers. Six-time Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J.J. Lilitha fondly called Amma by her followers and supporters was nothing less than a god for her party cadre. And despite numerous controversies surrounding her, like we've been talking, she long enjoyed a cult-like following in Tamil Nadu. So here's a look at the journey through the years. Born on 24th February 1948 in a Tamil Iyengar family, Selvi Jailalita Jairam had a very colourful yet controversial life. From acting to politics, she saw several ups and downs in her life. Forced to get into acting at the age of 15 due to poverty, Jailalita went on to become a prominent figure in Tamil cinema since her debut with Venera Aday in 1965. Her versatile acting and expertise in various forms of classical dance made her a celebrated icon in South Indian cinema. She acted in as many as 140 films including Tamil, Telugu and Kannada. Her prolific acting eventually won her the title of the Queen of Tamil Cinema. In a versatile career, Jailalitha also acted opposite Bollywood superstar of yesteryears Dharmendra in the Hindi movie Izzat. <laughs> She acted in an English film titled Epistle that released in 1961. The film was produced by Shankar Giri, son of former President of India Dr. V. V. Giri. After over a decade-long career in cinema, Jailalitha turned to politics in the early 1980s. Many believe her political career began because of Tamil superstar and former state chief minister M. G. Ramachandran since she had acted in several movies with him. However, the six-time Tamil Nadu chief minister maintained the decision to enter politics was her own. The turning point came for Jailalitha after MGR's death in 1987. In 1991, following the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi in Tamil Nadu, her alliance with the Congress party propelled the coalition to a massive victory. She became the first elected woman chief minister of Tamil Nadu, serving the full tenure. Since then, Jailalitha ruled the state politics steadfastly wooed for support by various coalitions at the centre in the past 10 years. Her rule saw Tamil Nadu unrolling some of the best health programmes, even as her popularity grew among the masses, so did the controversies over abuse of power and corruption. This led to her defeat in 1996 and later conviction and arrest in multiple corruption cases. Until 2010, Jai Lalitha saw several upheavals. But she remained resilient and made a comeback, being elected the Chief Minister three more times during the span. In 2014, the AIDMK Chief was convicted once again in a disproportionate assets case. A year later, she was finally acquitted and resumed her position as the state head till her hospitalization on September 22nd. Now on to more news and over 60 Rajya Sabha members have moved to petition seeking impeachment proceedings against a judge of the Andhra Pradesh Telangana High Court alleging atrocities against a Dalit judicial officer. The Rajya Sabha Secretariat confirmed receiving the petition from 61 MPs and said a decision on its validity will be taken in the next two days after examining the matter. The petition, mainly signed by TDP and left MPs, alleged that Justice C.V. Nagarjun Reddy committed atrocities against a Dalit principal junior civil judge in Kadapa district to allegedly put pressure on him in a criminal case. As per provisions of the Judges' Inquiry Act of 1968, if the motion is admitted, the Speaker of Lok Sabha or the Chairman constitutes an investigation committee consisting of three members, including two judges. 100 members of the Lok Sabha or 50 members of Rajya Sabha have to sign the petition of impeachment. In international news, Russia and China have vetoed a draft resolution at the UN Security Council that called for a seven-day ceasefire in Syria's embattled city of Aleppo. It was the sixth time Russia has vetoed 
a Security Council resolution on Syria since the conflict started in 2011 and the fifth time China has blocked action. Both Russia and China voted against the draft submitted jointly by Egypt, New Zealand and Spain. Venezuela also voted no, while Angola abstained. Other 11 UN Security Council members backed the resolution. The document called for the ceasefire to allow the unimpeded access of aid to Aleppo. Russia said that the document infringed the Council rule, allowing countries 24 hours to consider the final wording. The U.S. dismissed this as a made-up alibi, saying that Russia wanted to preserve recent military gains by Syrian government troops in Aleppo. Russia's UN envoy, Vitaly Churkin, said that the draft had not been given the traditional 24 hours for it to be analyzed. He added that the vote should have been postponed until a meeting of Russian and U.S. experts on Tuesday or Wednesday in Geneva. Неужели сохранение их контроля над несколькими кварталами города строит, стоит страданий тысяч людей? 最后, 我还要质问英国代表, 他有什么权利在安理会歪曲其他国家的立场。安理会是庄严的场所。that's all we have for you on the breakfast news. Thanks for joining us. The news continues after a break.